Oi, this is me. I'm about to get crafty, kinda, I guess. I've always been crafty, but now I guess I gotta put it on the line. Uh, I'm a nerd and I make terrain and accessories and mod vehicles and put shit together for like Warhammer 40k and all sorts of hobbies, D&D, &D, fantasy minis, that kind of stuff. Um, I recently stumbled onto this game called Gaslands. Um, it's future car combat, but with 164th skill cars, like Matchbox cars and Hot Wheels cars. And I've always loved Matchbox and Hot Wheels cars, and it, it just really, the way the system is, is written, it's really smart, and it really gelled with me. So um, I made some terrain for it, and I'd like to share some of my mods and some of the terrain that I've made for Gaslands with you. Okay, materials. This is corkboard. It's one foot by one foot. It's 12 inch by 12 inch. Um, I don't know what the metrics are because we're stupid Americans. Um, it comes in a pack of four. Four of these for like five bucks at Walmart. Four bucks at Walmart. It is one of the coolest materials ever. And I figured with little cars, 164th scale cars, finger for reference, 164th scale cars, uh, I did a little bit of math and I figured out about how how wide a lane would be so the minis fit you know relatively nice on the, the spaces um, with about approximately how much room you would actually have on the road to the berm and you know the shoulder um, but what I did is I wanted to make them look broken up and destroyed so I started cutting the pieces out a simple radius for a curve um, Second, sorry. Tidying up, tidying up. Bad editing. Okay, we'll edit that out. <clears throat> Keep rolling. Uh, so I took the back of an art an art pad, a 24 by 36 art pad, and I cut it up into pieces because it's this really dense, awesome uh, cardboard. It's super thick. It's super strong. I used PVA glue. Um, obviously, I templated out my roads. I used PVA glue, and then. I broke up uh, the, the cork board. If I keep saying cardboard, I'm a twat. I apologize. I broke up the cork board so it looks like there's holes in the road. So it just gives it a really nice, a really nice broken up feel. And you can see I spray painted some pink on the back of the art pad one day. So that comes through. But you can really see kind of the, the different routes I took with the roads and the different definitions and stuff like that. I, I, it was really fun to try to make them all look so different. Um... And then I just, you know, kind of went and I, I did curves same same way. Sorry about the light, straights. So I got a lot of a lot of road. I can cover a lot of foot, feet, um, with only like a couple bucks worth of material. Uh, I used. Uh, okay, we'll do the instructions uh, next. So how did I put this together? It should be pretty simple. Um, I cut a piece of cardboard the size of the piece that I had before it was broken and broke up my pieces knocked some more out i made sure to take time just to use my hands to give a little little gappage and if you can see like on this one um you know a lot more tearing out and holes being made in to, to vary the the texture of the roads greatly um pva glue glued it all down and put a weight or a heavy book on it um overnight and here we go they're super sturdy they're somewhat flexible which is cool um but this is going to be perfect i'm going to paint it the whole thing probably black or a super dark brown uh fill in the holes a little bit with this extra wonderful stuff you get when you work with it uh, let's give it a little more depth of texture and then dry brush the shit out of it put some lane markings on it and some aggregate on the side of the road and i think they'll look absolutely brilliant so i will keep uh updating you guys on what I'm doing, where it's at, how it's going, bro. Check that bitch out. That's one of my customs. Yeah, that thing is sexy AF. Oh, anyhow. All right, fans. I'll see you around. Take care. Fat Max. 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 Fat So when you're happy with your cork board glued to your cardboard and how it's broken up, um, I'm going to kind of do these areas and these areas. All right, here's the lanes, there's the center line. So this is like the gravel along the edge of the road, right? 
kind of the, the berm, I guess is what you would call it. But it's it's way too sharp. It's way too on purpose looking. So I was using just my hands to pick up at the edge and that took flipping forever. Uh, and then I was using sandpaper, heavy grit sandpaper, but it was wearing down over time. I found this. This is perfect. This is a drywall saw, like a keyhole saw. Um, but these, these gnarly blades on here um, just take it right off. Like, all you gotta do is a little bit of a little, bit of, a little bit of up and down action, yeah. A little bit, a little bit here, a little bit there. Just give a little scrape. Don't make it look so, uh, so purposeful. Make it look more organic. You can use this again at the angle. You can gouge the piece a little more if you need more, you know, character. And the great thing about this cork board is it's so forgiving. I mean, it's it, that effect is gonna look great. Just like a nice, pull a nice scrape with the vehicle wiped out. I hope you can see that. You know, got drugged through the the asphalt and made a nice scratch. So, the more work I do on these, and on banging them up and kind of doing some damage, before I paint them, the better they're gonna they're gonna look. The easier, look at that. Came right there. The easier it's gonna be um, from a final checkpoint. But again, I don't want any of these edges. Plus, when you're putting these tiles next to each other um, on the board and whatnot. They don't quite meet up. Sometimes they've glued a little odd, or they look a little strange. You can just try and get that that factory edge off there. Um, when they meet up, then if I have another piece that I've done to the edge, um, when they meet up, it doesn't look as as awful. It looks like a little bit more of a natural transition than if they were to be flat, butted up against each other. And you can of course do that, you know, with either edge. So they just look a little. It looks a little smoother. It looks a little better. Transitions a little a little better and makes it look. More like a singular piece of road, even though it's modular. So yeah, that's kind of the detailing step. Um, and then what I am gonna do also is not all of them, but some of these bigger holes. I'm gonna take some of this byproduct that we just made. Yeah, do this in an area you don't mind. Like don't do this over your computer <laughs> or like in a in a in a nice room. Um, but then I'm gonna throw a little PVA down, right? Sprinkle a little bit more of that in there. I don't know if you can see. I don't know if you can see amateur bullshit going on. Um, and then that'll be a nice texture, so it won't just be flat, flat. So, and I will probably do a little bit of uh, grass eventually. Those ones are still being worked on. The tough to grass that you get for 40k. And so yeah, this this drywall saw is is the shit. Very good, very good tool for the job. The right tool for the job. Work smart, not hard. So as I was working on these roads, giving them a little bit more detail, I realized something that is really going to help me at the end of the modeling, and that is this line that I've drawn here. Um, if I kind of just route it out, like if I just kind of follow it with the knife, I'm creating right where up to the edge a nice line where my road detailing stops and my edge my berm begins and I just found in doing that and my giant hand the entire time um, but now we got a nice cut line here um, so in case the paint does go over the lines or whatever it's a little easier to define the edge of the road where that berm is going to be go nice soft edge but we st there we go nice soft edge but we still easily have that defined there so these are gonna look great you guys keep up the hard work and they'll look just as good as these so after everything is dry and we have our cork board nicely pressed onto our pieces of cardboard um, some of these areas that I dug out look super sweet but they're too clean again we we're talking about roughing up these edges so here's what I do to make it look even better I take a little bit of PVA glue it doesn't have to be Citadel it can just be Elmer's that's fine just like we used to affix the board I drop a little bit into these areas here I try not to get it on the sides because I'm just trying to get the bottom right and then we use haha what came off during our scraping and weathering of our boards, our breaking of our boards, and then, sorry, if 
plastic bags in one hand are no fun. And then just liberally sprinkle in this area here. Uh, and then we're going to do that for each and every one of these little areas that we feel necessary. And when that's all shaked out, shake, shaked out. When that's all uh, removed, when the extra is removed, shaken out, um, it'll look really slick. It'll give it a little bit of texture and it'll make it look a little bit more organic. Like it's just not all flat underneath where the concrete, where the roads broke up. So again, I'll show you after all that dries and we will probably start the painting process at that point. All right. Oy, oy. Uh, this is basically stage two. Um, I had completely blackened uh, with black paint the <clears throat> pieces of cork board glued onto cardboard. And I actually have quite a few more down here. <clears throat> and so what I did is I was using this generic uh, black paint to blacken the roads, just using a very stiff brush and getting in all the crevices. I had to do it twice because as soon as you did it the first time, once all the wet paint dried, um, you could see some really obvious missed spots. And I still have a few teeny tiny ones here and there, um, but not a big deal. Uh, you can see I have this nice uh, gray. I used paper towels because I could not find my favorite sponge and I crumpled them up in a ball and then I dabbed them into the paint and then onto here and uh, pardon me I dabbed them into the paint and then onto here right and got the texture that I like the cool thing is is I'm using this uh, this generic paint uh, this black generic paint I black the whole things up but then what I did is I had about I'd say a quarter left in this bottle <clears throat> and so instead of letting a mixed paint dry out which it will do I literally just took the white, added it to this bottle until I got the shade that I liked, and then it's going to stay fresh, it's not going to dry out, and on top of that, when I come up from this color, when I come to my next color that I'm going to do in the center of the road to do my highlights with, I can mix it in this bottle. So once I have all my pieces done and I have this, this gray taken care of, uh, I can mix up from here if that makes any sense whatsoever. And then once I get done with that stage... I'm going to use this kind of stuff. This is Battlefield Brown Battleground. It's a little it's a little aggregate. Uh, I want to use this Citadel Sand because again it's going to have a nice color contrast on the edges here. Now I will tell you something. Before I became uh, more of a modeler I used regular sand. Go buy a tiny bag of play sand. Use regular sand. Regular sand is beautiful. This has got a nice texture to it and whatnot, but I didn't buy this. I inherited it from a buddy who got out. Uh, I'm also going to use some of these that I think are absolutely wonderful. Army Painter Battlefield's Winter Tuft and Highland Tuft. They're a tiny little blob of grass. <laughs> Terrible camera work. Right, I'm going to work on that. Uh, it's a piece of it's a piece of plastic that has these little tufts of grass that you pull off with a pair of tweezers, right? and then you place them where you need them on your thing. Put down a little super glue. So this will just add some really nice little colored accents here and there uh, through the cracks uh, to make it look like there is still growth um, on top of some using some of this, and some of this here and there, and these cracks as well to give them more character. Uh, that's about all I got for now. Uh, part three will be up where I got the highlights in. Um, I'll start using some of the aggregate and some of the pieces of... I can't come up with a better word for this than aggregate. I hate it, but it's it's little, stand, little stands, little fake little stands. Um, and then I will show you guys the progress on that. And then we will move forward. Alrighty. So I ended up finishing up the majority of the base painting on my roads. I came in with a, a much lighter gray. And then just the other day I had the idea that I wanted to kind of add some dirt texture. And I used this really great rusty brown. Um, just It was just like a ceram coat or a cheap, you know, Americana paint from uh, Pacatan's acrylic. And I just used a really stiff brush, and I kind of dry brushed 
the edges of the roads where the cracks come in just gave it a little bit more a little bit more variety and a little bit more life uh, it really that color really added a pop of uh, of death of uh, the color really added a pop of depth uh, to it and really kind of make made the black stand out even more. Um, I'm very, very satisfied with it so far. So next up stages are I'm going to do a lighter, a, a beige, more of a beige, and then I'm going to start putting uh, sand and aggregate uh, on the sides and uh, in the little cracks in the road and then do those little graf grass, can't talk today, and then do those little grass tufts. Uh, to bring out some detail and then throw the lines on there and uh, These will be dope. So yeah So okay, I had a few issues with my camera. and I lost some of my footage I did have a video of me gluing this sand material to the edges of my roads. That's just this um, I didn't pay for this. I won't pay For this kind of stuff that I can find um I don't know how much this Citadel sand is, but Citadel is known for their price gouging when it comes to simple stuff like this. Um, all this aggregate that we made by chopping and hacking on these boards, that can be used as material for the edge. Or go buy yourself a bag of play sand at Home Depot or Walmart or wherever they sell it. Use the play sand. You don't have to use this specialized stuff. The reason I have this is I inherited it from a gamer, a buddy who passed. Um, so I'm putting it to good use. You just put down some, look, more Citadel branded. This is actually Elmer's glue in here. This is, this is, this is the, what I like to call uh, the placebo method, or the you believe it works better because it's got a label on it method. Same thing I do with my kid. Um, yeah, absolutely, it's Eckridge bologna. No, it's regular old crap bologna, but it doesn't matter because, anyhow. So you don't have to buy this, just Elmer's glue. Straight up Elmer's glue or the most generic school glue that you can find will work perfectly for this. And you take it and you just dab it along the edge. Dab it, dab it, dab it. It should be pretty simple. And then you take your sand and you sprinkle your sand over the edge. Knock the excess off. Let it dry somewhere. Uh, give it some time. I normally give it like an overnight. Um, but it sticks on really great and it adds a ton of depth and character and contrast to your roads. So, yeah, that's pretty much the final stage. Then I just put the road lines on them to make them look a little bit better and rock and rolled from there. So, I'd love to see your guys' results too. Let me know or share with me what you've done or what you've accomplished with this technique. I think it's pretty idiot-proof and pretty gorgeous.